Vidhi Kalra and welcome back to my channel which is called 5 Minute Economics where I teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes. So as you can see I'm back today with a new video in my old setup after a few months and it feels great to be back. Today's video is oligopoly and the kinked demand curve where I'll be discussing all you need to know about the kinked demand curve. Why is it shaped like that? When is it shaped like that? Features of an oligopolistic market and much more. So yeah, let's get started. Also guys, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram at 5 Minute Economics. So guys, before I tell you all about the kinked demand curve, let me tell you when does a kinked demand curve occur? The situation occurs when we have an oligopoly or an oligopolistic market. So before moving to the kinked demand curve, let me explain you all you need to know about the oligopoly, which will obviously help you in further understanding the kinked demand curve. So and what is an oligopolistic market, guys? So it is firstly a more realistic market than, you know, a perfectly competitive market and maybe monopolistic market. Market, what you've heard about an oligopoly is more realistic that is you know the current day market is more like an oligopolistic trend here we have few firms few means more than two because if it's two it's called duopoly but more than two but there is no upper limit over here but obviously there is not more than 10 you know a range of two to ten and not many not uh, very few as well so here we have around maybe like five to six firms so that is an oligopolistic market here we have differentiated goods. It means everyone is selling their own good. That is, there is uh, no homogeneous good. The goods are differentiated. And since the goods are differentiated, they are very well the price makers, which again is the next feature of an oligopolistic market. So here they can set their own price. They are not price takers, but price makers. Next, guys, very important feature, barriers to entry and exit. So why are they high barriers to entry and exit? Obviously, because if there will be a lot of firms, it will be not an oligopolistic market anymore. So we have barriers in the form of, you know, economies of scale. We have some other barriers as well. And that is why uh, probably, you know, just early starting up barriers. So it prevents the other new firms to, you know, set up in the market because the older ones have already, you know, established their place. So there are some barriers to entry and exit then guys price rigidity now this is the very base on which our kinked demand curve is you know uh, established and here kinked uh, price rigidity or interdependence is a very key feature of an oligopolistic market so what does that mean basically guys here when the firms they set up the price they have to think about the action what the rival firms will take when they increase or decrease their price here they cannot independently set their own price you know what they want to here they have to keep in mind the situation which will occur if they at all increase or decrease the price so in that way there is interdependence you have to think uh, interdependently with other firms which are prevalent in the market as well as there is price rigidity now because of interdependence and because you know of this behavior there is a kind of price stickiness so that price wars don't prevail the price is rigid it doesn't change easily um, now since price is rigid so how is the competition occurred a competition is more like non-price competition uh, maybe because you know someone has a better quality someone has better after sales service someone has you know better advertisement skills so that is where the uh, competition occurs not in terms of price maybe but in terms of other things where there is non-price competition under an oligopolistic market then profit maximization is not the sole objective so here guys in an oligopolistic market one doesn't aim to just maximize their profit their sole objective is not that but their um, objective might be you know sales maximization their objective might be to establish themselves in the market or their objective might be to you know gain a lot of market share in the market so different objectives for different firms some examples of an oligopolistic market is Pepsi and Coca-Cola. So do you like ever think, guys, when the price of Pepsi rises, does it influence the price of Coca-Cola? Of course, yes, they are an oligopolistic market. It will influence. And if you've seen, they always have a same or similar kind of price, right? Because if one increases, the other also changes. So, you know, that is always there. We have oil companies, which are very, very good example of an oligopolistic market. We have grocery stores, which are also having a similar kind of price there are because if one increases or decreases the price there occurs price wars so there is price rigidity one doesn't change the price even guys um 
wireless carriers are a good example of an oligopolistic market so now before i move on to the king to demand curve i hope all these features are very much clear to you so now guys let us finally come to the king to demand curve and what is it and everything about it so here you can see clearly on the x-axis we have quantity demanded whereas on the y-axis we have price just like how it is in the normal demand curve okay so this blue line is actually our kink to demand curve and here point E is the kink which actually shows that we are seeing the shape of the curve is changing after this point. Now the part which is above point E is the price elastic demand curve, this portion, whereas the portion which is below the point E is the price inelastic demand curve. Okay. Also guys, the demand curve over here is the average revenue curve as well. That's why I've written AR is equal to D. Now, supposedly, now, initially, our price and quantity are P star and Q star, okay, as you can see. For example, one firm, it increases its price a little to, a little, we see that the quantity demanded decreases a lot. Why does that happen, guys? Because it's an oligopolistic market. If you tend to increase the price, people will not buy from you. They will buy from the others and your market share will fall. So if you tend to increase your price, you know, you are going to lose on the market share. People will buy from the others and, you know, the others are at the same price. Now, raising a price, raising your price will actually be a very foolish move because here we are at the price elastic portion where we see you know a rise a little rise in price also will lead to a huge fall in the quantity demanded on the other hand if we think that you know maybe lowering the price will give us more market will give us more customers for example we lower the price a lot you know from p star now we go a little down to p2 maybe but what do we see guys over here since we are the price inelastic um part we see that a quantity actually it raises rises a by a very little margin why does it happen is it is because you think logically guys when you tend to lower the price it is a price in interdependent market it is an oligopolistic market where i told you you have to think about the rivals as well right so when you are actually lower, lowering the price when you are following the price whatever you can call it then other firms will also tend to lower their price so that they don't lose the market share and when they do that, when everyone does that, so basically what happens, everyone has lowered the price. In a way, now your profit has actually fallen. You have made, you know, you have actually pushed everyone else to do the same thing. And in that way, you all are the at the losing end because you have, you know, fall, made your price very much low. So basically, your total revenue will fall and actually there will be no share in the change in the, uh, you know, no change in the market share because everyone has now lowered the price. So you understand, guys why you know came to, uh, why you know in an oligopolistic market they tend to uh, keep the prices very rigid they don't tend to change the prices because if they rise also they will lose the market if they fall the price falls then there will be you know you are you are the losing end so why to change the price at all let us keep the price whatever it is maybe it's 10 let us keep it at 10 why do you want to raise it to 12 or why we want to lower it to 8 so that is what the king to demand curve says because here we are at a price elastic portion and here it is an inelastic demand curve so even when you fall the price falls the quantity hardly rises and over here because we are at the price elastic portion a little rise in the price will also push the quantity you know lower by so much so i hope you're clear about the king demand curve i think i forgot to tell you this was discovered by paul sweezy in 1939 and this is majorly what you need to know about the king to demand curve so lastly guys i have added a little addition to the previous diagram over here in red we have the mr curve which i have drawn uh, please remember the shape of the curve as well as the MC1 and MC2 curves, which is the Marshall cost curve. So here, I don't want to confuse you much, but just in plain and simple language, would like to tell you this, that as long as we are in this vertical gap, you know, if you can see this red line, it is actually beneficial for the producer to produce at that price P and uh, you know the quantity Q you I already told you prices are rigid right and if they increase or they decrease it is of no use that's why we said prices are rigid but if you see from the other side also if they have you know MC MR concept if you've studied 
basically it is beneficial for them to produce at this point be in this vertical gap and this is an, an additional reason why prices are richer. So in basically under the king's demand curve, I would like to conclude by saying that guys, I just told you that yes, they don't increase or lower the price because if they do so, they will indulge in price wars, but they do so. I mean, it's a competitive world and they tend to lower the price, even knowing the fact that after they lower the price, what the rival firms can do, they do so. Also, sometimes, you know, since in an oligopolistic market, I told you if, you know, prices are not changing, there is more like non-price competition. So, you know, like price of flights, if you see, uh, it's an oligopolistic market. We see flights, uh, the prices are same but they might change you know the quality their punctuality they will work on other additional benefits which they can provide so that is the non-price competition which occurs under an oligopolistic market and lastly guys of course you know being interdependent on anyone on any company on any firm is not a very great idea because you always have to think before you know acting and changing your prices so sometimes they tend to what do they do they tend to collude basically all the two three firms they tend to become one and act like a monopoly and if they're doing that they are the superpower you know they are at the winning end and the customers are then you know at the t losing end but here over here they tend to keep the prices common the prices same similar under oligopolistic markets so this is all about oligopoly and the kinked demand curve i hope this video was useful for you please do like this video and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you in the next video pretty soon